Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who know the great courage of the glorious martyrs Nereus and Achilleus in confessing you may experience their loving intercession for us in your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors flew open, and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. <clears throat> your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever 
Forsake not the work of your hands. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I will send you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because, because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you this, the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Church members today, Saints Nereus and Achilleus, they were Roman soldiers of the Praetorian Guard. We don't know a lot about their lives, actually, but we know that they were venerated in the early church. One account indicates they were even baptized by Saint Peter himself. But earlier on as guards, they were the ones that would have had to carry out the orders of persecuting Christians, but we're told by a miracle of God's grace, they received the faith, and then they resigned their positions, knowing full well what lay in store for them, probably more than the others, because they were the ones that were at one time persecuting, and in fact, they were uh, put to death. And Pope St. Damasus, in later years wrote an epitaph over their tomb. In repeated apparitions of the Lord after his resurrection, he so often greeted his disciples by saying, peace be with you. In this gospel passage, he's telling the apostles already before that peace is his farewell gift but certainly at his resurrection, this was the first gift of his divine presence at Easter. Peace or shalom, common greeting even among some Jews nowadays. It's a greeting as yes, also a wish for well-being. Here our Lord though is not really just wishing peace, he's giving it. And that peace is that interior tranquility and calm that enables us to persevere uh, no matter what. Well, think of Paul and Silas, how they were imprisoned, uh, but first beaten with rods. And yet we find uh, them uh, praying, not bemoaning all their pain or suffering, but they're praying and actually even singing hymns uh, during the night. And uh, so this is what uh, God's gift of peace does for us. Peace is, we hear a lot about peace in our world, but it's not just like an absence of uh, conflict or cessation, cessation of uh, fighting among countries. It's uh, not freedom from anxiety on a personal level but it's really a gift of the Holy Spirit for those who uh, 
remain united with the Lord Jesus. St. Vincent de Paul did not experience fruit of the Holy Spirit until he decided to turn away from his earlier ambition of having a lucrative ecclesiastical position and decide instead to give himself completely in service to the poor. Or take um, now Saint uh, Damien, whose feast would have been celebrated two days ago, except for it being a Sunday, and how he experienced great peace when he went to Molokai, despite severe criticism and even threats against his person in doing so. Now, the Lord is not also just offering words of peace to us, but he's also uh, establishing the means by which we are to receive it, especially through the sacraments. So in confession, one receives, if the peace, the priest says, go in peace. So if we are foolish enough to lose God's grace through sin, then it is restored and peace is returned to us especially in the Holy Eucharist that we celebrate, the body and blood of the Lord. It's Christ's substantial presence among us and within us. This is why also, just prior to receiving our Lord and Holy Communion, we receive and we hear that gift of peace. Peace be with you. And so there's this intimate connection between Christ's peace and the sacrament. So let us, especially in this Easter season, receive these sacraments with joy and strive to be an instrument. Like St. Francis say, who uh, said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. So let us receive Christ's peace and share his gift with others. In our prayers this morning, we pray for bishops throughout the world, really for all who bear witness to the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Pray for our civil rulers, our own president, as they work to combat this deadly pandemic. We pray to the Lord for Christians everywhere and for Easter joy for all who profess faith that comes to us through the church. We pray to the Lord. Pray for doubters, for scoffers, for sinners, and the inconsolable, that they may turn to the Lord in their need and receive his peace. We pray to the Lord. For return to good health for all the sick, especially our own parishioners, and a return to spiritual health for all those who have fallen away. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of all the faithful departed and for all who mourn for them, we pray to the Lord. And finally, for all of our mothers enrolled in our Mother's Day Novena of Masses, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. And we make all of our prayers through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In honor of the precious death of your just ones, O Lord, we come to offer that sacrifice from which all martyrdom draws its origin through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance, you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Narius and Achilleus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those who cannot receive Jesus in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist at this time, we offer you the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To the victor I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of my God. Alleluia. Let us pray. As we celebrate by this divine banquet, the heavenly victory of the blessed martyrs Narius and Achilleus, we beseech you, Lord, to bestow victory on those who eat here below of the bread of life and to allow them to eat as victors from the tree of life in paradise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection.